What to expect when marrying a Filipina? Um, the first thing I want to say is there's no such thing as a Filipina as if you're buying something off the internet and it's got a, an instruction manual. The reality is people are people. They, they have very different variables that make them an individual. Um, it's why you'll see some people are an absolute nightmare and some people are very, very good and fantastic people. Somewhere in the middle, you'll get a, probably 60% of the people. Because uh, obviously, the nightmare stuff, it's not that there is a huge amount of people this happens to, although it's become a bit of an industry, it's because people generally complain. If something goes wrong, people put it on the internet these days. If everyone's happy and content, they don't really talk about it. Nobody's interested in seeing it. But when something is a complete and utter disaster, they've been scammed or whatever, they will tell at least 25 people. It, it, it's, it's a bit like the um, bad sales. You know, customer service will tell you it's at least 25-fold the damage done um, because an individual that is not happy with your customer service will tell or reach at least 25 people because they'll tell the five guys down the pub they know, for example, who will then tell their wives, da, 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 and it doesn't take long to get to 25. If something is good, most people generally don't talk about it. That's, that's the reality of things. But what you will get, though, is if you have a relationship with somebody from the Philippines, they often have certain traits. Um, things like they're often cheerful regardless of situation. Um, it's more a case of they ignore the problems until tomorrow um, because quite simply they have no control over them so they don't bother thinking about them a lot of the time. Um, it doesn't mean that they are any less worried about things. It's just generally they know they can't fix it so they'll worry about it when it happens rather than before. Um, this gives them a positive attitude. Often it's not good in the sense that if you've got a major issue coming up and you're just ignoring it till the last minute, then obviously it's not very good. This is why people often complain about some of the problems relating to people's lack of financial ability and financial planning because they don't often save for tomorrow. Um, it's why things like payday loans and pawn shops are so big in the Philippines because a lot of the stuff is down to planning because people say oh yeah but they don't have the money if somebody will give you a loan on something you had the money um, what I mean is if you turn around and put the money aside every month then you would have had the money why would that make any sense? Well, you've managed to pay a loan and its interest, which was more than you needed in the first place. So the fact is, you did have enough at some point. Um, or you should also be trying to get away from those loans. But you will find people even look forward to the loans. I've seen people do it. They've just got clearer debt and then they go straight back into it because they've just paid their debt off. And you're like, what are you doing? You know, you're better off having zero debt, but often that's the mentality because that's the system it exists. So changing some of these habits for the better, it can be quite difficult sometimes because it's so ingrained. But generally, people's outlook is pretty positive, but also you'll find that... The, the the women I know are very family orientated. I haven't met anybody that doesn't actually want children or got children. Um, I'd say that's 100% of the women I've met from the Philippines. Well, at least the under 50s. Because <laughs> um, over 50s, they've already got kids normally. Um, but the, the whole point is people are family orientated. It's more of a traditional marriage. I wouldn't say it's just the Philippines that has that. I think what's happened is the Western society has become more fragmented um, and there's this obsession with women wanting equality, which is why it seems to be leading roles in nearly everything these days that are women. 
Not that I have an issue with it, it's just that it's gone from equality to pushing this as a major issue when it's not. The whole point of equality is people being at the same level. Not, well, I'm more equal than you are, because then it just becomes a complete joke. But you have the positive traits. You've also got the the fact that because most women are after a traditional marriage, they are more concerned about the kids, looking after you, um, which means, you know, preparing your clothes and that sort of stuff. Um, the, there's a lot more people f focused on that than, say, getting their own education. Um, and it doesn't mean that they're uneducated people. You find that it's culturally normal. Um, I find a lot of women, even well-educated, still have the same habits because it's ingrained culturally. Um, it's, you know, it's just one of those things. It, it's the guy is the breadwinner. The, the woman looks after the house. Um, obviously, you've still got some people that are independent, but they still retain a lot of the household chores and stuff themselves um, because of the cultural thing. Personally, I have no issue with the household chores that whatsoever, um, but my wife sees it as quite simply that she deals with that. I deal with making the money, which seems a fair deal to me. Um, but that seems quite normal. And I know some people have mentioned already the fact that they think, oh, well, if you marry a Filipina, she's going to expect you to carry her, blah, 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 blah. What were you after in a relationship? You, you have to evaluate what you were looking after. Most of the guys I know are happy with a traditional marriage. If you're happy being single and whatever, then why even browse on the channel? Because um, obviously your view is that of a single person who wants to remain single and has no real relationship interest. If you're looking for a modern uh, marriage, then you ain't going to get it from the Philippines. There, there isn't that many people in the Philippines I've come across that are as aggressive in being a Western wife. <laughs> Um, I've met a, co a couple of women that were self-centered, which is, is, is a bit different because um, quite simply they were, they're more like a what would be termed a black widow where they kill off their husbands that sort of time. Not that they're killing off their husbands, but it's more the fact is they are purely after assets. They're after nothing else. They don't value the marriage or anything else. They're just physically looking for the money um, in every shape and form. And they're, they're on husband three or four or whatever. Um, but the, the reality is there is a few of those around. Now, the interesting thing was a conversation this morning one in one of the comments relating about guys that go to the provinces to find a partner. I find the provinces, um, I don't know where people define as provinces, you see, because if you're talking provinces of Cebu, uh, Cebu is only like a couple of hours away from the city most of the time. Um, so it's not really what I'd call provincial, it's more like um, suburban. <laughs> because you've got access to the cities and people are generally going from the cities, no people from the cities, etc. Um, but if you were going to, say, um, Negros Island and you're going to the inner parts of Negros, it's a different story because even getting to Negros takes about five hours. Um, but when you go in the inner bit, it, you can take two hours to get there and if it rains, you can't get back for a day. Um, so it's it's very very remote in that sense now the education and everything else the infrastructure and the women there are not going to be anywhere near um educated in the sense of a western perspective uh, they'll be they'll be capable of farming they'll be capable of things like that but they're not really people that are pushing themselves forward. They, they, their existence is very, very day-to-day. 
And that's the easiest way of putting it, day to day. And when I've met people that have actually met and married somebody that far out, I find their relationships a little bit strange because the wife just sort of like wanders around doing her own thing and the guy will be sitting talking to me and I'm thinking, what goes on in the relationship? Because they seem as if they're just existing in the same house. But because the education level and everything else is completely um, off the page, you know, they're not even in the same book in many senses. It doesn't mean that the woman's got a low IQ or anything else. It's just that she hasn't had the education and she hasn't come from an environment where it's sat, she sat around with um, other educated people. She hasn't come from an environment that encourages going to the library from that sort of stuff. Um, not that there would be a library there anyway. But the, the whole point is there is very little in common for that relationship. And that's what I say. I can't understand why somebody would say, oh, go with the provinces because the women are more timid or whatever. If you need that sort of relationship, then the relationship is not built on a solid relationship. You build the relationship on trying to secure things for yourself, um, which more than likely will end in failure at some point. The first thing... You, a friend of mine was saying about where he is because he's quite remote but he he has a boatyard is there's a lot of retired guys got these young partners and these boats are all half finished projects because when they retire they're going to build a boat going to marry a young woman blah 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 and then six months later they just sat outside the bar all day because they're bored got nothing to do run out of money for the boat etc etc that for me is not even existing that that's like being in a prison <laughs> in a situation where you can't actually progress even your view of retirement um is concerning you know the the only thing you've got going forward is waking up for san miguel now this is why i say if you're serious about moving to the Philippines, retiring in the Philippines, someone, don't just meet up with somebody and go, right, bang, she's beautiful, I'm going to marry her, blah, blah, blah. Take time. If it takes a year, it takes a year. The, the whole point, if you're there on your own and you're doing stuff on your own day to day, firstly, your cost of living is going to be cheaper, but more importantly, you're not going to make a mistake that will affect you long term. Um, because you can meet a few people, introduce yourself, get to know people. But generally, I don't recommend going with anybody under 25 um, because generally Filipinos mature late. And I'll say Filipinos because some of the most immature people I know are guys and they're in their 30s. 30, yeah, I'd say 30, 35. I still like... Um, 16, 18 year old kids, um, you know, joking around, messing around, not taking life too seriously, um, cheating on their wives, etc., etc. Um, it's just the sort of things you need to be aware of is not to be in a rush. A woman in her, say, 30, 30 year old, 26 year olds, 30 year old, is more likely to be somebody that's working one of the things i recommend is always look for somebody that already has a job and has had a job for a long period of time because they're independent um they don't need you uh, they're just looking for a companionship which means that you're going to get somebody that actually wants to commit to the marriage in the sense of marriage because financially they don't actually need you um i recommend looking for somebody that has some interests in common with you or at least has some interests whatsoever because some of the people i've met their partners have got nothing they watch filipino tv all day they, they they don't have a depth to them i've tried giving people books and stuff before just to you know and what are you interested in what's they've got nothing there's just nothing there and even trying to encourage people to get an interest in something can be difficult if they're not used to having an interest in something. 
It's very, very strange. Very, very strange. Um, but very, very common. Um, so, yeah, having some interest is very important. Having the commitment to the relationship in the same way you have. Um, because if they're not serious about marriage or whatever, then don't marry them. You can still date each other. You still hang out and be friends or whatever. But unless they're actually serious about them settling down and getting married or whatever, nothing says you have to get married. I mean, I know plenty of women that um, are separated from their partners because uh, they married too young and their partners either got them pregnant and then run away or they um, had issues of some other description, jealous husbands, etc., to the point they've been separated for over five years already. Um, those sort of women are ideal friends because they have had it hard in the last few years, but they used to be on their own, but they, they like companionship. And I, I think for a lot of guys, a lot of the things that you want in life is not about the um, sexual stuff that's often pushed, because uh, if that's all you want, then you may, you shouldn't get married. Our relationship's much deeper than that. But you, you should actually sit there and think, well, I just want a friend. I want somebody to hang out with. I want somebody that I can go to restaurants with and stuff like that, you know. And then there's, there's some good women out there that would actually jump at the chance of marriage, but they can't get married because obviously they're still separated, legally married to somebody else. But the, they're a great person to be hanging out with because they're often educated. They're often... Um, independent they're financially looking after themselves they're often the oldest child um, or they're fairly high up in their their family tree but you don't have their family issues because you're not married to them um, but you, what you have is a friend so even if you're buying all the meals and everything if you go out nothing wrong with it because at the end of the day you're not getting any of the family hassles because this is my friend. This is not my husband. This is not my boyfriend. This is my friend. And that, that's one of the things I would look at. Um, if you were serious about just having friendships. And in retirement, why not? You know, there's nothing that says you have to get married. And like I said, a lot of the hassles come from marrying the wrong type of women. So why marry one? Those are the th my thoughts on the Philippines. But if you actually wanted to marry somebody... Make sure they're actually a good match for yourself um, because you'll get a lot of yes women. Women will just go, yes, yes, uh, I love you too. Um, they like anything you like, etc., etc. That is a sign of a person with low education um, and eager to please because the, what they're trying to do is seek out a relationship without even thinking below the depth of what will happen next. Um, they're just saying, cha-ching, money. Or, there's a foreigner, uh, I can get a better life with this foreigner. There's no depth to it. And then later on they'll go, I don't like this guy anymore. I'm bored now. Oh, it's not what I expected, blah, blah, blah. Because they didn't even think about what they wanted out of life. They just assume foreigner, better life, and nothing beyond that. So don't rush. Simple as that. I know this, this is a bit of a babble on, but I thought I'd throw some different things into this video um, just to create some chatter on the conversations, on the comments, because... It's different scenarios, you know, it, because I've seen a lot of people make videos about married to a Filipina. It's completely wrong. Um, a person from the Philippines has certain traits, but at the same time, they're an individual. And as such, there's so many variables. But at the same time, you can also have these specific things we've discussed already, which are normally where most expats meet partners or should meet partners. Thanks for watching.